Lawrence under the direction of Ian Flynn and Tom Unks. Assisted by Tyler Kingsland and John Souza. Color guard flags and rifles supervised by Addison Caturley. Assisted by Marla Cohen and Samantha Hussey. Cheerleaders supervised by Rebecca Braga. Band led by student conductors Lauren Sullivan, Aaron Thatcher, and Lexi Arruda. Dartmouth High School is proud to present the Dartmouth High School Marching Band.
meatball subs, chicken and fries, french fries, hot dogs, and all the proceeds do benefit the Babbitt School Music Association. Hello again, everybody. Jim Thompson alongside Paul Santos and Andrew Thompson. We welcome you to this telecast of Dartmouth High School football tonight, a non-conference game as Aponiquit comes into town to take on the Indians. Andrew, the Dartmouth High School Indians out to a 3-0 start, led by their defense. Yeah, I'd say the defense has been their main strong point this season. They've only allowed seven points out of three games, two shutouts, 35 nothing. both of those shutouts against Stain. Um, so they have a lot of seniors led by a lot of uh, juniors as well. So that's a strong suit of their team, and that's what they're going by this year. And hopefully the offense can start to pick things up along with the defense. And I'm sure that fellow right there in your, your screen, longtime coach here, now Rick White, will tell you the more seniors you have, Andrew, the better chance you have of winning. Absolutely. These kids have been around the program for three years. They know what they're doing. They know what's expected. Uh, it's great to have that many seniors on the team, and hopefully the juniors can uh, follow suit next year and, and continue the uh, – the stride that Dartmouth's making right now. And Paul, on the offensive side of the football, nine out of the starting 11 seniors, led by their quarterback, Will Kelly, and their running back, Ethan Marks. Both having an outstanding season so far. Will Kelly bringing that senior leadership to the green. Last year throwing his first touchdown pass of the season. Ethan Marks last week, what a tremendous Ladies game. 100 yards rushing, yes, and in fact he ran a touchdown kickoff back the during the course of that game. And Dartmouth outscoring their opponents 94 to seven so far in the season. Great offense from the experienced Indians. Well, let's take this time out to honor this wonderful country of ours, the Dartmouth High School Marching Band. It's our national.
school marching band as we get set for the opening kickoff. It's a Pontiquit in town to take on Dartmouth High School. Paul, let's get back to that offense. Will Kelly and Ethan Marks, two of the area's finest skilled offensive players thus far in the early going. Well, it's really great to see the development of these players because we've been watching them the last couple of years as you take a look at the Dartmouth sideline there. We talked about it at the outset, experience, there's just nothing like it. And coaches really enjoy that, you know, when they take some young players and they can teach them what they know about the game, especially this experienced staff under head coach Rick White. Get the information to the players, teach them, have them work, they grow, they mature. And by the time they become seniors, you know, it really makes a difference. And the thing about this year is that you don't have like this mixture of, you know, older kids and younger kids, which can work well at times. But this year, you just have a senior dominated team, all of them coming up the ranks together, all of them peaking at the right time. I think this is going to be a great year for the Indians. And so far, they have produced on the field. And Andrew. A couple weeks ago, no J.J. Esterlin, another weapon for Coach White out of the backfield. Absolutely. I went to the Volk game, watched the first half, and his first touch as a Dartmouth Indian takes it 46 yards for a touchdown. So that's a wonderful addition to have with your Coach White in the offense. And he's back there getting ready to return the kick now. So hopefully he can put on another great performance. Back for Crane, Ethan Langs, and J.J. Esterlin. Back deep for the Indians. This is J.J. Esterlin, right on cue, and he takes the ball up the near sideline after a brief muff, shoved out of bounds. Out of the Indians will have it. Murray. Christopher Murray and the Brian Freitas, therefore upon it. So the Indians will have the first series of the game. Here's our head coach, Rick White. Sensational career here at Dartmouth High School. Will Ke Kelly at quarterback for Kelly's the Kelly's a starting quarterback, and he's a good one. And they hand it right to Ethan Marks to start the Marks game. On the carry. Marks gets up for a gain of two. Right we ran into Griffin. Byers. Gain of two on the play. It will be second, second and long eight. now here for Dartmouth. Jim Thompson, Andrew Thompson, and the great Paul Santos. Wow. You people watching live on YouTube. Wow, very nice, Jim. Very nice. My wife said to be kind to you. Here comes the flag from a couple of referees. Yeah, it looks like a Pontiquit jumped early there. So the Indians will pick up a quick five and save the down. Offside of Pontiquit. Five yard penalty. Well, from the Pontiquit point of view, kind of a disappointing turn of events there. You know, the left side of that. Defensive front making a great stop on a terrific running back of Dartmouth, and right after that, the penalty to It'll give the Indians five and yards three. that they wouldn't have. That hurts. And timeout. And Coach Dartmouth. Mike Drew is taking an early timeout. Not sure why you'd call timeout on the second play of the game, but maybe he's unhappy with what happened on the first play with the line, or something's not right with their calls. Um, I don't. I don't really know. Yeah, I would. I would think that. You know, Marks usually is probably averaging five or six yards per carry when you get hit at the line of scrimmage. So maybe perhaps Pontiquet came out in a different alignment or actually maybe even uh, had an extra guy uh, in the defensive box. So Ricky will make a, a quick adjustment to that. Got his team there on the sideline. 3-0 and on the season is Dartmouth High School. Pontiquet looking for their first win. Take a second down and three. And you look at this Dartmouth team so far this season, what a great position to be in. You can do almost anything here. And that may be coming up too in the huddle. So we've done a couple of games from the stadium, Paul, and we complained the first time the game took so long. And we're off to a slow start in this one as well. Here's Marks, he's got running room. Ethan's got midfield and he's down inside of Pontiquit territory, down to the 49 yard line where he picks up a first down and Jackson Gagnier 
Made the tackle. Not before Ethan picked up a first down. Great job that time, a 17-yard gain for Ethan Marks. Look at the explosiveness. You can tell this guy has been around. You see how big and strong he is compared to a couple of years ago. He's a great runner all along, but this year, a senior working out in the gym, getting that speed, carrying the ball, big first down for the Indians. And here's Kelly off the ball fake. And Kelly advances up for about a three-yard gain. Vincent Oliveri making the stop for uh, Pontiquet after a short gain by the Indian quarterback. Very impressed with Will Kelly out of the coaching staff, Paul. His, his of command of the offense, but yet he has great speed. Yes, yeah, so and that makes him really a double, maybe even a triple threat. You know, he can throw the ball, he can drop back in the pocket, he can run. He reads the thing well. He reads the option. He can hand the ball off. He's very deceptive during the play action. He can do it all. And here's Kelly speaking Kelly to him down the far sideline. Kelly's down inside the 35. Gain of 13 and an Indian first down. Saltzman knocked him across the boundary, across the far side of the field, but not before the Indians pick up another first down. As Paul said, Kelly's a senior. He knows the reads. He knows when to hold it and uh, knows when to hand it off. And right there, he knew just reading that end and took it around the end there. And 18 yards later, he's got a first down. Nice read. Last game we did, he just did all kinds of damage against staying on that very play. Estelin in motion. He runs here to the near side. He's looking for runner room. He's got the 30. And down inside the 25, down to the 24 yard line where Christopher Murray ran him to the ground. But not before Dartmouth Paul picks up another first down, a good opening drive for the high school. Well, a nice look at Estrelin here, our first look at him here against Aponiquit, gain of about 12 yards at that time. You see the Indians carrying the ball to the left, carry the ball to the right, you know, really exploiting this Aponiquit defense so far. Very explosive, you know, they got so many weapons and that man right there, he's got to be happy. I mean, anytime you have all these seniors peaking at the same time, the same year, wow, this is a great opportunity for the Indians to do some damage throughout the season and beyond, hopefully. Nine seniors, Andrew, start for Dartmouth High on the offensive side of the football. And that's something great to have, especially in high school football. But what's different for me looking at this team is all the running backs are big and they like to run hard and hit after the contact. Years before, you had guys who were a little bit faster, a little bit more elusive. Marks and, and, and J.J. Esselin, they like to hit people. And even Will Kelly, he's, and he takes around the end, and we saw him run over two Sting guys in that first game of the year. They like to hit, they like to contact. A little bit different than some of the speed and, and elusiveness that Dartmouth used to have a couple years back. And they get two capable backups in the backfield with uh, Will Chow and um, Patrick Crane. Crane. Patrick Crane. I was thinking of Coach Craig, who I happened to coach with. Here's the quarterback on the keeper, breaks the first wave of tackles. Kelly on the and escape. Jackson Gagnier. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Gagnier just over nine carry. minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Gain of one on the play. It will be second and nine. Ball is on the I have to get them honest there. You see Kelly trying to sneak up the middle over the offensive line, but that time. Pontiac was done a pretty good job in the interior defensively, and the Indians have exploited mostly the outside so far. And there's a pitch to the outside. Marks Mark, Mark squares his shoulder, leaps over a tackler, and picks up only a couple. Third down, and we'll call it eight yards to go. Great job for Aponiqui here, even on the outside, stringing out the elusive running back here for the Dartmouth Indians. What a great opportunity for Aponiqui. The Indians collecting three first downs so far on a drive that began back at their own 27-yard line. This is a great opportunity for them at third down and eight, and a sizable conversion, the biggest one facing the Indians so far. Ethan Brown did a nice job for Aponiqui, defensive end, holding up the Indian blocker, which yielded just a couple of yards. Here's Kelly off the ball fake. Kelly rolls. Got him. Throws. Overshoots a man. Kelly's pass intended for. J.J. Eslin was Eslin wide home. open for a touchdown that was able to it be completed. Incomplete. Looked a little rushed, a little, you know, over the, over the head and just the set his feet down and had plenty of time to make that throw. So hopefully next time around they can complete that pass. That was too bad because everything was done perfectly. The offensive line block, blocking, 
Uh, Kelly with the play fake. Someone he rolled out. It felt like he had plenty of time to make the pass, but just slipped out of his fingertips, and Eshelin would have gone in for a touchdown had the ball gone, uh, you know, more easily into his receiving hands. Fourth and eight here for Dartmouth. Here comes the rush. They're going to set up a middle screen, oh. and it's well defensed. And the Indians will turn it over on downs. Well, nice play by Robert Cody. He's complete to Patrick Crane. Brought down immediately. That was well set up, except for the one defender. First and ten for Quantiquit. They will take over on downs. Looks like number 72 saw that coming. Nice play by him to stay home and prevent that from being a big game. That's on twice this season. Dartmouth had a chance line. to complete screen passes over the middle and have not been able to connect. Well, what a reversal there. The Indians seemingly marching down the field. And then all of a sudden, three great defensive plays by Aponiquit. Next thing you know, they've got the ball. There's our first look at Aponiquit. The snap goes past the quarterback. Ball is snapped over the head of the quarterback. He falls on it on their own five yard the flag is line. down as well. Penalty marker on the play. Let's go field side, see what we have. Referee is Daniel Como. Prepared to give us the signal. Preliminary illegal illegal shift against the Pontiquit. The penalty is declined. What do they call that second down in a country mile? Yes. He's running with the Bumble. ball. In the ball has it. Looks like Dharma has recovered. Say they have it. Let's see what the referee say. No, oh. they say Aponiquit has it. Nice play by the Aponiquit kid. It looked like Dartmouth actually had the ball first on the ground. They had a chance to get that ball early. Jackson Gagnier was the runner. Gagnier on the carry. See the Dartmouth, is it Will Kelly? Yep. I'm not sure if that's the best way to fall on a fumble, but looks like he had possession. Fumble was recovered by Salzman. It will be third and 20. Third down, a long way to go here for Aponiquit. Mahan swings it out here to Gagnier. The Indians have a well defense, and they'll have to punt the football away. Pass complete to Gagnier. Patrick Crane there for Patrick the Indians. On the tackle. A couple of big swings in this game so far. The Indians marching down the field, seemingly at ease the for the most part. Then ran into three successive plays in a row by the Aponica defense. But then Aponica got the ball back on downs, and that snap and that penalty, which buried him at like a Second down and 30. Never able to recover from that. Now the Indians are going to get the ball back in great field position, possibly at midfield. And over Wren's going to take one big hop. Oh. And the ball is muffed by Marks. Marks on the and he recovers it. So the Indians special teams, Paul, opening kickoff a muff. Now the first punt of the game a muff. Right, and they were fortunate too because in neither situation it really hurt them that badly the first time. I think it was Estrellan picked up the ball and still managed to return it 11 yards right there. Bobbles out of his hand, but then he still recovers it. You know, in a case like that, you know you're going to get great field position anyway. And with the ball bouncing like that, the chances of really doing anything with that was probably not that good. I mean, if you get the ball at the enemy 48, you know, maybe you just, you know, cover it and take it from there. So the Indians will have their second possession of the game for the Aponiquit 46-yard line. Here's Marks. Right up Marks the gut goes the Ethan. He's got a solid gain of eight. Jackson Gagnier with the stop. And the Andrew, he might have been the last guy to tackle. Last guy to tackle him and probably the last guy you want to see come through the hole is Ethan Marks right now. He will be second. Talking about that strength that Andy was talking about before. The combination of strength and speed together is what really makes Marks such a terrific back and difficult to bring down. 
Kelly over the middle, long, deep, and just falls incomplete. Will Chow is the intended receiver. Yeah, perhaps a step on the defender, but timing just a bit off. We'll bring up third down now and short. Nice play call though. Second, uh, second down and short. Give it a give it a chance downfield to a playmaker. Try to get open open guy downfield and not uh, your third and short and you got Marks and you got Essel in the backfield and you got Kelly shouldn't be a problem here two down territory I'd say yeah, give it to Ethan and he's still driving that pile and he's right at the first down marker let's just see where they're going to spot the football I think they have it they'll spot it at the 35 and that's about 18 inches more than he That's needed, and he an didn't move down. the chain It'll across the far way, possess the football. No score with five minutes and 19 seconds to play in the opening quarter. You're watching Dartmouth High School football right here on Channel 9 and live on YouTube. Here's Estelin, near side, looking to get the corner, and he's going to be shoved out of bounds by Caleb Provincia. Knocked out of bounds by Provincia. Nice play by Provincia there. Staying home, getting the contain, keeping him outside, show the leverage, and not allowing uh, Esselin to get to the outside and turn the field. Seems like Oponiquit's been able to come up with some pretty good defensive plays as the ball approaches their end zone so far. Here's Marks right up to shoot. Down to the 25-yard line. That's enough for a first down. Gagne down making the stop That's once again. As Andrew says, first Paul, once he breaks through that first Indians. wave and you're a secondary player, you really don't want to stick your, your nose in there to hit this guy. No, absolutely. He just has so much power and the combination of that and the speed. And nice blocking that time, too, by the interior of the offensive line. Really made a nice hole for him, and he went through there like a truck. And here he goes again and runs right in. To Griffith, it's one of the guys he hit. Right down Gagne here again. Again. I think Mr. Gagne is going to be a little sore tomorrow morning when he wakes up. I'm sore just watching him. <laughs> well, it's never a good thing when your free safety is making every tackle on every play as well. I mean, somebody on that defense needs to do something in the middle to stop uh, Marks from just totally taking this game over. No score here. The Indians are on the march. Esterlin, Esterlin on the carry. right up the gut he goes. And he's going to be short of what he was looking for. Be second down. Lombardi on the tackle. Actually, third down. Ball In about two. 18 yard line. It will be third and two. What do you foresee here? Marks up the middle, Paul. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's on the carry. <laughs> he picks up a first down. Nice. Chris Murray on the tackle. Yeah, you got to give credit there to the center Dan That's Martin, the Indian right guard down. Josh Miller, we'll right tackle Parker Souza. Pickering and Johnson and Just inside these guys up front really pushing people yard. off and creating a nice hole there for Marks to get another Indian. First down, third one of this drive. Here's Kelly. Throws, end zone, just comes up a wee bit short. Baron Dutra was the intended receiver. And I know the passing game has struggled a little bit this year, but Will Kelly needs to stop and just focus and set his feet, make the pass. He's either rushing it or you know, his feet aren't set underneath him. He's an athletic kid. He can make those passes. He just needs to settle down and make those throws. I mean, it's third game of the year. They've been struggled all year with the pass game. It's going to come, but just got to settle down a little bit. Second and ten. Marks. And he is slammed down there with a nice tackle by Ethan Brown. One-on-one -on -one with Marks. Grabbed him around the shoulder pads and got him, wrestled him to the ground for no game. Gain of four. It will be third and six. Ball is now check out Brown on the defensive the side of the ball. Here he is right there. Came from behind and tactfully got him around the waist, spun him around, and 
brought him to the ground, creating up a third and six. We'll see if the Indians draw up here because Ponick has been pretty tough in the red zone so far. Kelly up the ball fake, Kelly and they were waiting for him. And stepping up in the hole was Jonathan Griffith. Jonathan Griffith on the tackle. Bring up fourth down now for Dartmouth High. As Kelly comes to the sideline to get the call from his head coach. Just over a minute and a half to go the in the opening line. quarter. Looks like a field goal. Field goal coming in. Fourth down and four. I was thinking that they have a kicking game the Indians have had over the last few years. And an opportunity here. It looks like they're lining up. All of a 20, 25 yard. Approximately 26 maybe. Operation looks good. Haverdash knocked it up and right through good. the uprights. So it took nearly the whole first quarter, Paul. The Indians finally get some points on the board. They've controlled the football between their own 30 and the opponent with 10, but only have come away in this game with three points. Right, it feels like they should be ahead by more than this in a way. You know, they've absolutely correct. They've controlled the ball pretty much from their own territory all the way deep into Aponico territory. But every time they've got into Aponico territory, either one of two things has happened. Number one, Aponico has made a big play. Or B, the Indians, you know, not being effective with the passing game. You know, they've thrown some incomplete passes, and all of a sudden it's second down and 10. And all of a sudden the running game, you know, you need a couple of runs to get a first down, changes everything. So those two things have slowed them down. But good for the kicking game. They're up 3 nothing with 108 to go in the first. And they've chewed up the time of possession. Aponiquit has had the ball momentarily. Yeah, right. Offensively, Aponiquit, we haven't even really seen them. You know, they just we have no idea what they're going to do. I mean, that one time they had it, they snapped the ball 20 yards back at the penalty, and that was a big hole they could never get out of. And it, they recovered their own fumble as well. Yeah. But, the you know, the passing game the Andrew was talking about, I mean, last year, it was one game uh, I covered here, and, you know, Kelly was zinging that ball all over the field successfully. So, again, that passing will come. But I think that you have to have some of those passes be successful in order for the running game to be effective. I mean, Aponico is waiting for the run up the middle after the incomplete pass. Here's a high end over end kick, and that is muffed. It's picked up by Saltzman. He's got running room. He's still running across the 40 and out to the 44-yard line. Flag on the play, though. There is a flag. Saltzman on the carry. Penalty marker on the play. Graham White on the tackle. It looks like they're going to march this football back. Holding against the Ponequit. Well, that one hurts from the Laker point of view. Obviously, you've held the potent Dartmouth offense out of the end zone as far as touchdowns are concerned, and they have an opportunity to get some great field position pretty close to midfield. You can wipe that out, and they still are not done calculating where the ball's going to start. Holding against the Ponequit, 10 yard penalty from the spot. Down to the 15. That's a big, big penalty if you're a Ponequit. You got three plays so far in the first quarter, and you get a nice return, and you get backed up 30 yards. So they'll have their second possession of the ball game. The second one, very much, very similar to the first possession. Deep in their own territory. Long field to go. They trail by three. Mahan is the quarterback. And he gives to the first man through. I think that was Gagne. Gagne on Gagne on the carry. Patrick Crane made the tackle Patrick for the Indians. Crane on the tackle. Gained a three on the play. Gain of three, it will be second and seven. Ball is on the Aponiquit 19. From the Aponiquit point of view, they really need to establish something here because the worst thing that can happen for them is they go out quickly and give the ball back to Dartmouth at midfield. Here's a little jet sweep action. And running with the football is Vincent Oliveri. Oliveri here he is. Gain of two. Yeah, gain of a couple. We'll bring up third down and a long four to go for Aponiquit as the quarter is going to come to an end. So at the end of the first quarter, gentlemen, Indians controlling this game. 
only lead by a score of three to nothing. That's the end of the first quarter. Right, it's been kind of an interesting first quarter. You know, the Indians got the ball and came down the field. It's like they had three first downs. They went all the way down into enemy territory, turned the ball over on downs. We talked about Aponiquit's first possession, snapping the ball deep back near their own end zone, never dug out of that, the penalty. And Dartmouth marching down the field again. Bunch of first downs and having to settle for the field goal. So again, Aponiquit right here, they really, from their point of view, really need to move the ball. And they get a third and four, so it looks like they're content on grinding it out. This is a big third and four right here, Andy. That's right, and it's only a matter of time before Dartmouth breaks one uh, for a touchdown. And if they get up 10 nothing in this game, the, the wing tee is, is a nice offense with deception, but when you're down 10, 20 points, it's a uh, it's a tough tough hill to climb at that point. We saw that with staying with their uh, you know their beer offense. They had nothing on nothing on offense to come back. So if Monaco gets down early, often I, I know the quarterback can throw it, but it's a tough tough to change up your offense in high school football midway through the game and try to make a comeback that way. A lot of times that happens. You, know, you see a game, it starts out kind of grinding a little bit, and then all of a sudden the team, like the Indians, the senior-dominated team, the team with all the weapons, all of a sudden it's like, you know, the uh, top of the volcano uh, comes off, and all of a sudden it's an avalanche of points. So we'll see if that happens tonight. That very well could be the case. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've had their chances. I mean, J.J. Eslin was wide open on that. That pass they missed by Will Kelly. Uh, a couple of different miscues on offense for Dartmouth, but they're right there knocking on the door. They just got to punch it through. All right, Paul Santos, explain what's going on right there. That's where Jim was going to do the game next week. <laughs> no, but you do this for a living. But we'll, well, well, they live stream stuff. Yeah, we do live streams. Yeah, we'll get to that. Here's the quarterback Ooh. on the keeper, and Patrick Crane says, hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> number eight, <laughs> met number nine, and it's going to force Aponiquit to punt. Let's get back to that, what's happening in that end zone as we let the folks at home watch the replay. But, Paul, that's the way high school and colleges are going. A two-camera shoot, everything is done remotely. Right. I mean, we were down there. We were talking to him a little bit. He has a remote camera on top of a pole in the end zone, and he's got one up here, too. And they can actually tape the game with one person with, you know, a remote control in their hand running the whole show. So, yeah, absolutely. Here's Estelin. He's going to let it bounce. It takes a big hop. He feels it. He's going to be surrounded by... Five Aponiquit Lakers before he's taken down at about the 43-yard line. We'll see where they mark his forward progress. Esselin comes to the sideline. His team's ahead by a score of three to nothing, but as Paul and Andrew has noted, Dammuth has moved the ball between the 20s with no problem, but yet only to come away with three points. I don't think Aponiquit has a first down, do they, Paul? No, I don't think so. Let me look back in my copious notes here. It will be first and ten for the nope, Indians. I do not see on one. Their own line. All right, so the Indians have it. First we'll and ten with Kelly just over 11 minutes to go in the opening half. Here's Crane looking for running room. Cuts it back inside, gets it out to the 45-yard line with a short gain. Right down by Griffith. Gain of two on the play, it will be second and eight. Beautiful night for football here in Dartmouth. Game time temperature right around 60 degrees. Clear skies. The only wind blowing is the hot wind between the three and ounces up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Ooh. Kelly off the ball fake. Now he's going to swing it out here and whistles blow. Kelly on the... Come on. The officials think that the the ball was in the hands of the interior person right there. It was Crane. Possibly. That's what I thought. I thought Crane had the ball, but <laughs> they're, they're supposed to know that. They're down on the field. All right, Andrew, walk us through it. Well, the referee clearly does not see that that's a fake. And, of course, they're always in the best position possible to make these calls. And uh, here he is. He's going to make the call. I didn't see it. I was out of position. Esterlin mm -hmm. was. Yeah, that. You know, he I was mean, wide open for a touchdown. That was going to the house. So much real estate in front of him was ridiculous. Oh, what's the call? Too good of a fake on the offense. Referee Daniel Como speaking to 
Rich White. Yeah, that was uh, well. Whistle, replay the down. It will be second. I rating. guess uh, all you viewers at home watching in and watching live on YouTube, we've all made mistakes, and that was a great ball fake, and in, uh, inadvertent whistle. You know, they, they teach you in football, play to the whistle, but when you don't have the football, they shouldn't be blowing it, I guess, but they did. And here's Kelly being chased. And Kelly, Kelly showing his athleticism, nudges it up to about the 48-yard line, will bring up third down for Dartmouth. Paul, the defensive opponent was better than advertised, I think. Yeah, I, I think so. You know, I'm looking down there and I'm thinking, wow, I, I thought that, you know, the Indians would have exploded for a big one by now. It still may happen. It still may come. It probably will come. But right now, Aponiquit, they're playing with confidence. That defensive front, the linebackers, they're not letting them run the ball to the inside. That's for sure. Kelly. Rolls near side, quick little toss, Ooh. and it's deflected. And Patrick Crane was wide open here down at the 46-yard line. That would have gone for a first down. Instead, it brings up fourth in the punting unit coming on for the high school. I have Kelly 0 for 4 unofficially in passing the football so far, and that's really hurting this offense. You know, if you can't complete at least some of those passes, right, the defense can really focus on the run and really key on the inside. I mean... You really need to complete a couple of those to really loosen things up, and it hasn't happened yet. That's a little bit of a surprise. I thought the, the passing game might be a little bit more crisp by yeah. right now. You know. I, I know. I thought Dutra would have a big year with Will Kelly. They had a lot of connections last year and played together for a few years now, so it's interesting to see. Martin get away. High kick. Agnew It's going to let it bounce, and it takes one big hop right into the hands of Oliver Teradash. And Aponiquit just trailing by a score of three to nothing to have the football with just over nine minutes remaining in the first half. Our score from the stadium is not with high three. Nothing, I'm Jim Thompson, he's Paul Santos. And Andrew Thompson on microphone number three. <laughs> You know, I'm looking at uh, Aponiquit there, their offense, right? Their defense has done such a great job to hang around to keep them in the game, but it's not going to mean much if the offense can't do anything. So so. We, we heard a lot about Mahan, that he can he can throw the football, but they haven't had much of an opportunity as they run it here on first down and pick up a yard. Martin made the tackle for Dartmouth High School. Short gain of one. On the yeah, Coach White talked about it before the game that the lefty quarterback, he likes to sling it around the field, has not had that opportunity at all. I think he's been under a little bit too much pressure to do it, so they've been content to run the ball so far at least. Well, the way the defense is playing, if uh, they could keep the score close, getting it to the half at three to nothing, then you get a shot in the second half. Perhaps not wanting to throw the ball, which might end up in a turnover. As they run it here to the near side. Gagnier on the That's Gagnier, and Gagnier's out across the 40 and out to the 43-yard line where he picks up a first down, and it may be Aponiquit's first Shall first down of the game. Tackle. Nice run by Gagnier there, getting nice. outside, taking around the corner. Enough. Got around Chow and, and was able to down. cut it upfield. And first and first the big play for Aponiquit gets them out of their own shadow of their, their, own their end zone, and yards. maybe now we'll see uh, quarterback start to sling it around here now they have a little bit more room to operate. Uh, that's their best play on offense all game long, not even close. Gain of about 16. And there's the handoff to the running back, Oliveri. Oliveri, Oliveri picks up three. And Andrew, I just get the feeling they're just happy to control the football and keep it away from Dartmouth. I think they're happy with a three to nothing score. I, 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 you'd have to be uh, with the way Dartmouth's played on offense, not scoring, but moving the ball up another field, uh, getting out of their own territory at this point in time. I mean, if you're the opponent, you've got to be happy. And maybe you can sneak one in here before the half and take the lead seven to three at the half. And, and hopefully you can continue that in the second half if you're upon court. Fake the jet sweep and put into the belly of Gagnier and Gagnier he was tripped up 
by Parker Souza. Fell forward for a gain of one. Gain of one on the play. Third down and seven now for seven. the Lakers. They're 0 2 on the season. The Indians 3 0. Ball is on the opponent with 48 yards. Indians 47 yard line. holding on to a 3 0 lead. Nearly halfway through the third. Uh, excuse me, the second. Does two come before three? Yes. I thought so. Here's the quarterback looking. He's got a man caught. First down. The hands pass. Chris Murray on the reception. Chris Murray is complete. <laughs> Will Kelly with a nice hit there on Christopher Murray. Solid hit, but not before he picked up the first. Now finally, we see that that arm that we were talking about. Nice, hard, left-handed sling there by the quarterback that Rick White was talking about before the game, and he put it on the numbers. It was a tight spiral, good speed right on the numbers, gain of 10, and they needed that with the third and long. Yeah, they're going to get it out here quickly. That might be a lateral. Let's see. Incomplete pass. Murray's pass. Vincent Oliveri, the intended receiver. And Paul, isn't it great to see on the near side? Maybe we get a camera shot. We have a lovely lady down here as a side judge. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, you know, a couple of years back uh, on the Paul Santos Live Facebook page, <laughs> you will see a story that we did on Michelle Lima. We interviewed her about, you know, being out there on the football field, and she has an athletic background, you know, playing sports all her life, and. She's out there on the field and uh, was talking to her and some of the other officials, and she loves it. And she, by all accounts, is an excellent official. It's great to see. Time out on the field. You Time see out it in the NBA. Play. We've seen it in college basketball, and it's uh, it's great to see Michelle out there. The Pontiac calls a timeout with 6:09 remaining. You know, I asked one of the male officials. I said, "What is it like having, you know, Miss Lima there?" And they said, just like anybody else, just like anybody else. It's an official, it's our partner, we work together, male, female, what do we, you know, I mean, that's and that's right, exactly, you know. In the end, you know, this is 2021, exactly. so, you know, uh, it shouldn't be too, too surprising to see uh, someone like Michelle out there. Well, 6.09 to go, a Pontic would just kind of hanging around. Very confident in this Dartmouth team. I'm still confident that, you know, they're going to put one this in the win column. They're going to put one in the W column. But right now, you're just getting that queasy feeling that, you know, you just want to get rolling, do what you can do, explode like you have over the last few weeks, and, you know, just, just get into high gear and put these guys away, you know. Hasn't happened yet. It still might. I'd like to see them complete a nice pass. You know, we're talking about that one that was overthrown to Estrelin. Wow. What a great, I really like that play, that fake, that rollout. Kelly's athletic at the quarterback spot. So is this young man, John Mayen. On the Indian Second down and 10. Line. Off to play fake. Throws, got a man. That's complete for a first down. Crane missed the tackle. And getting down inside the 30 Thank yard you. line. Reception. Well, similar to what Dartmouth did, a little backdoor bootleg there and, and had the wide receiver open on the flat. That's Harrison Lemieux, number 16 on the reception. The up for the first down. Line. It will be first and 10 for Well, is done one thing better than the Indians, and that's pass the ball. Look at this nice, crisp pass from me and down to Lemieux, and Juke steps a couple of times, gets past the first down marker, and Aponiquit has once again moved the sticks. Back being chased, he's going to throw near side, just short of his intended receiver. They'll bring up second down. Ethan Brown. Ethan Brown. He's a big fella, Paul. Just couldn't Aaron reach over to get that off his shoe tops. Looked like backyard football there for a second, as uh, Man was directing traffic back there, trying to get a man open as the play was broken, and he was directing traffic and almost pulled it off. Clock is stopped with five minutes and 27 seconds to play in the opening half. Here's the pitch to the near side. 
Gagnier is tackled from behind and flag on the play as well. Huh. Pink flag. Lots of towel. And Aponiquit is backing up. We have a hold on Aponiquit. I thought that was a pink towel on the field there. See that? That was a flag. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is pink out here. There wasn't a replay challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Ten yard penalty from the spot. It will be second. It will be second and 21. Ball is on the Second down and a long line. Uber ride for the Lakers. Second time we've seen this happen to them, but this time they're in enemy territory, so maybe it's not as bad as the first time, but still could be a drive killer. And Gagnia takes the hand Gagnier off and the carry. bullies his way down to the 35. Gain of about four. It'll bring up third down and a mile to go for the Lakers. Devin Wilson and Josh Miller on the tackle. And we talked about John Mayen passing the ball of, during this drive. Gain of three on Looking the like a must-pass situation here, obviously. He's going to have to sling 17. one down the field to get this first down. Ball is on the Indian 36-yard line. I don't know if they're quite deep enough for four-down territory. I don't know. you got to get at least half of this back before you start thinking about that. You look over the sideline and get the call from the head coach. And they all look at their wristbands. Now they're ready to go. Zane Fife, the head coach there for Aponiquet. Low snap. There's the quarterback trying to get some running room. And Mayhan didn't find much. Right to pick up Patrick three. Crane. That'll bring up fourth down. Patrick Crane on the stop. It'll be fourth down and 14 to go for Aponiquet. Paul Santos, I think Indian. they're going to go for it. Right, you know, from their point of view, you really wanted to see more than just, you know, a couple of yards up the middle. You wanted to get it to, like, at least a fourth and five or something like that, but I don't know. The Indians would get the ball back with three minutes left if they don't make it. Plenty of time to do something. Mahan, here comes the rush right up the middle. He throws over the middle. It's caught, but breaking away and going to come up just short is the big fella. Ethan Brown, Ethan Brown on the reception. but I think he's going to come up just short. Timeout on the field. There's the Indians hold by a couple of yards, Paul. Right. Well, you know, in retrospect, not a bad idea because, okay, they got the ball to their own 20. That's about where, you know, the average run-of-the-mill drive might start anyway. If you try to punt it, maybe, you know, things can go wrong. Maybe you can't get it too much closer to the Dartmouth end zone. So... They get a lot of it back. They pinned the Indians back to a reasonable 20. And so now you call upon that defense with 327 to go to do what they've done all game long. So Will Kelly brings him out. Maybe this is the time the Indians click through the air. Will Kelly, the quarterback. Man, they run it to Marks and Marks on the carry. defensive coordinator has done a good job in defensing him all evening long. And we have a Dartmouth player that is down. Josh Miller, slow to get up, but he's popped right back up, and he's back in the Dartmouth huddle, good to see. Oh, nope, he's going to take a break. Yeah, I think it's a, a rule if you're on the, on the ground and the trainer comes out and the game is stopped, you have to come out for at least one play. You know, it seems to be play. okay. Josh Miller comes off the field under his own power. Second down and long here for Dartmouth. The running Second game, Paul, has been stymied. On their own yeah, surprisingly. And here's Kelly. He's looking for Kelly on the punches across the 25 and out to it's the 27-yard line, but it'll bring up third the down now for the high school. Just under three minutes to play here in the second. Looking for Will Kelly to take one on the outside here. He's going to RPO it and take it on take it on his own around the corner. They, I think they've been inside, inside. I think now they're going to try to break one out here on the, on the play fake. 
Paul, I'm impressed with the interior defense of Aponiquit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Andy's right. I mean, the times that Kelly has sprung out to the outside and turned on the Jets, it's been successful. Mm -hmm. Going to the outside, but not Kelly. Well, it's Marx. Marx is across the 35 and gets Marks spun out of Kelly. bounds at the 38 yard line, but an well, all important Alberry. first down for Dartmouth. He's out to the 39 yard line of the Indians. That's enough for a first down. So first yeah, the inside has been really, really tough for Dartmouth so far, and Aponiquit has played it well, as Jim pointed out, but this time pitch it out to Marks. He got a chance to get some speed going as he received the pitch, and a nice first down for Dartmouth. Here's Esterlin. He's looking Just for running room. He gets the yard, maybe two. Push back there. Vincent Oliveri. Andrew Oliveri's played a solid game. He just made a tackle out here at the 40 yard line and in on another one. Yeah. I mean, the, the, like we said, the interior, you know, keep inside the box. They're, they're doing extremely well against Dartmouth. Not going for the fake, staying in their, in their zone, staying in their, in their lanes and, and stuffing all the, the misdirections. So it's, again, if you're a pawn quit, you're happy with what's going on with a minute 30 left to go in the half. They have everybody within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And here's Kelly. Kelly on the carry. Kelly might have got out to the 44. Short gain, being up third down. When you have that many defenders within five yards of the line of scrimmage, you're not going to be able to run the ball. You don't have enough people to block. No, and, and if you look at Aponiquit, they're, they're big. Yeah. I mean, they got some big boys up front compared to, you know, Darwin sometimes has the size advantage. They play Stang and they play Volk, but it's Aponiquit front defensive line. They're big. I mean, it's not. You know, they're not little guys out there, and I think that also is, is a major help for the linebackers and everybody else coming up to make the tackles. As they fill in the gaps, they can see what's going on. Speaking of major help, referees have called a penalty on a Pontiquit. Now the referees are gathering. Preliminary call was offside against a Pontiquit, and that would create a, you know, two yards to get a first down situation, which would be huge the way Pontiquit has kind of frustrated the Indians a little bit. Doesn't appear that they've reached the conclusion, but maybe now they have. Hmm. Not that much closer. Referee is coming to the near side. Rick White wants to talk to him. Wants to know what that discussion was. I don't think the football's in the right spot. <laughs> the referees are looking up here in the booth for a little help from the official up here sitting next to us, and I think they have mismarked this. And Rick White's pointing to the scoreboard where it said second and eight, so they, they've got to mark this football. Should be around, a, right, 46 yard line. Five yards from the line of scrimmage. referees going to come over and official up here in the booth looking to he's trying to get the window open but he doesn't <laughs> realize how old this press box is he, <laughs> he may end up with a hernia by the time he gets that window up Doc Noons is showing his muscle ability here The officials down there are doing their best and working hard and all that, but so far they've had kind of an uneven first half, I guess we could say. Well said. <laughs> that ball is definitely mismarked. I don't know how these, these officials can't get together and figure it out. Kelly off the ball fake. Throws, marks, in and out of his hands. Passing Tough pass into traffic, though, across the field. Dangerous pass as well. Tip ball, someone's run behind. You don't want to see that if you coach White with 114 left to go in the first half. That just seems 
a little out of sync. They've had a couple of long drives. They seem to be losing a little confidence, Paul, on the offensive side of the football. Yeah, the passing game has really hurt every time they've tried to interject a pass. 0 for 5 so far unofficially, the passing game. And they're going to run it here with Fox. Gets it out across the 45, but he's going to be three yards short of the first down he was looking for. Clock rolling under a minute to go now. Timeout upon the half, and Aponiquit has called a timeout with 58 seconds remaining. So Aponiquit thinking they might be able to do something when they get the ball back, but you know, their offense really isn't cut out for coming down the field in 58 seconds. So I think if they go to the locker room at 3 0, they got to be happy with that. So, gentlemen, a big game on Sunday. I think you've heard about it, right? Yeah, who, who, are, the, who are the Houston <laughs> Texans playing? Oh, my God. I, I, You know, it's a lot of fun and all that, but isn't it going to be good when the game's over with? I've had enough of the uh, the Brady Belichick thing. I think we all have. I think most of us in this country are fed up with the news media, the sports media. I know I am. I know a lot of my friends are, and I know you are, Paul. And yeah, Andrew. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's just, just overkill. It, it's just overkill. But you can shut it off. Right? Yeah, I do. I don't. <laughs> I'm a big fan of sports radio. As soon as that subject comes on, I just put on something else. Yeah. I just. How you ever can compare a coach and an athlete when Bill Belichick is said forever? Watch the Super Bowl wins when he talks to Bob Kraft. He says one thing: the players. It's about the players. He does say that. So You're these right. media people know all this. It's about the players. You can't compare them, a coach to a player. You just can't do it. Yeah, how about them? How about them Red Sox? Yeah. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're talking about a dumpster fire. <laughs> so the Indians on fourth and short from near midfield are going to kick it away. Operation looks good. High kick, but a short one. Going to bounce and take an Indian roll down inside the 30. Down to the 25. Sam Bad says stay away from it. Takes time off the clock. Good coaching by Sam. And Aponicut will have an opportunity with 45 ticks left on the stadium clock. Well, Jim, what would you do if you were the Aponicut coach? Would you really air it out and try to come down the field, or would you just say, you know, we're going to run a couple times and let's get out of here? Well, I'll tell you, after the first call, after the first play. <laughs> Didn't you do that to me earlier? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you asked me if he's going to run up the middle. <laughs> but you. But by the time I answered, he was already doing it. What could I tell I you? I think you you're know? thrilled with a 3 to nothing. Right, me too. How wrong we are. <laughs> They're going to throw it. Pick it. It's going to be Ooh. almost intercepted out at the 45 yard line. I think Will Lemieux Kelly had a shot to possibly intercept that pass if he had seen it. Lemieux had it in his hands. Now it's for this reason that Jim and I said don't do this. No risk it, no biscuit, but. Will Kelly, goes second solid hit of the half. Imagine if the Indians had intercepted that, all that work of a Poniquit down the drain, and you hand it to him in great field position. Oh, they're going to throw it again. And he's got an arm, and he's got him. it down the middle of the field. It's complete. And running with the oh. football and going in for a touchdown is Lemieux. What a change of fortune right there. A Poniquit. You thought they'd just sit on the ball and they'd throw a long touchdown pass. Here we go. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Oh, me and oh boy, he just showed us, didn't he? He broke away. He heel heaved the ball down the field. Lemieux leaping in the air in the middle of that defense, hauling it in and then breaking tackles down the right sideline. A 76 yard touchdown pass to Lemieux. From Meehan, and just like that, Aponiquit takes the lead. That's the, that is the extra point. point. It's up, and it is good. good. So with just 23 picks left on the stadium clock, we have a shocker going on here at the stadium. Aponiquit with a late score takes the lead at 7 to 3. And I think if you're Dylan Gomes and you're laying on your pillow tonight, the secondary player went to tackle around the ankles and just couldn't get Lemieux to the ground and escaped the tackle and got his team the lead at seven to three. Talk about taking the wind out of the stadium, Paul. Wow, I gotta tell you, you know, we have to credit head coach Zane Fife and 
a thought process that they had on the other sideline. Jim and I were talking about, oh, let's, you know, maybe you got to be a little conservative here. No, no risk it, no biscuit, right? <laughs> You're going to be seeing that biscuit be, oh, being thrown all over the place on Sunday. Hey, when this game plays back, can we, like, turn the sound down right before that play happened? <laughs> Well, the people have done it for 25 years. They've listened to my mistakes. They expect at least seven to ten a game. Remember when the first Super Bowl the Patriots won? John Madden said Brady should sit on the ball going yes. overtime. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that. I understand how he feels now. Yeah. Uh, great call and a great, you know, great confidence in your quarterback to be able to say, you know what, if we're going to win the game, you got to go for the win. You can't be like trying not to lose. And so I credit them on a great call and great execution. I think the two, Indians, uh, they have their work it out from the second half. I think when you're 0 2 and you're playing for the playoffs, if right. you can pull this victory off, if you're opponent with, the number wise, the, however, the, the standing is, this is a big win for them. They get a lot of points if they can actually beat Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. So it's good for their chances in, in the playoffs. Kick bounces along the far sideline, and well done by the special teams as the Indians. Estelin dove on it, but that was a loose football. That was very uh, well done by the kicker. 22 ticks left. Indians now trail by a score of 7-3. to three. All right, so the Indians should just, you know, let's, let's throw this baby down the field. Yes. Let's go. Hey, it's been entertaining. This last, this last five minutes or so has been, been really entertaining with these swings back and forth. That's Kelly up the ball. Kelly Kelly's got running room. Look oh out. Boy. Kelly's still on his feet. Finally dragged down at the 35-yard line with 13 seconds to go. The athleticism of Kelly that time. Timeout, Rick White. Timeout, Indians. Wow, how about this? Will Kelly just faking the handoff and he does it so well the, the fake and then look he took off he for a minute it looked like he was going to go the distance line. and take it to the house Indians. all the way down to the 35 yard line or so Saltzman perhaps saving a touchdown for Aponiquit just wrapping him up around Saltzman the ankles to the get tackle. him to the ground so the Indians have plenty of time with 13 seconds, first and 10 from just inside the Aponiquit 40-yard line. About a 41-yard run there by Will Kelly. Wow, it's like the last couple of minutes have been like a heavyweight match. One side taking it to the house unexpectedly, the other side coming right back, all with, you know, about a minute and a half to go in the half. First and ten for the Indians. Here's Kelly. Pocket collapses. Kelly trying to wiggle out of there. He's finally gets out of got there. Clock is running down. Gotta He's got to get a timeout. With two seconds to go, they get him to the ground, but the Indians will have Kelly one more shot out. at it. Right down on the 30-yard line. He did a lot of running, but killed a lot of clock, Andrew. Absolutely. I mean, it's tough in high school football to try to remember to Get down, look down the field, the get rushed, get hit. Luckily, Dama has two seconds left to go in before the half, but if you're Coach White, you're hoping that he gets down before the end of the half and get a chance to call a timeout. Yeah, kind of looking across 31. Two ticks to go and one play to try to get into the end zone. Pretty good size distance there with the ball to 31. That's going to be a pretty good heave. Either that or you get it down, you know, if you're going to pass it, maybe you get it down to around the 15 and then hope that somebody can make a play for you. Kelly's had a tough night throwing the football. Shown his ability to run in the first uh, three games for the Indians. We're 3-0 on the season. Aponquit has the lead at 7-3. They're winless on the season. So they have to be thrilled across the way. And let's see if Kelly can take some of that thrill away from him with just two seconds to go in the half. Well, Ethan Marks under the, under the center right now, so. Yep, here's Marks. Here comes the rush from the backside. He's going to throw it long and deep in the end zone. 
and it falls to the ground incomplete. So the half ends with our score of Pontic with seven, Dartmouth High School three. Stay tuned for the award-winning band, the Dartmouth High School marching band, will be marching into your living room in just a moment. The score of Pontic with seven and Dartmouth three. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our football game tonight between the Aponica Regional High School Lakers and your Dartmouth High School Indians.
Now the Donna High School Marching Band will perform their 2021 production, Thorns and Petals.
I'm John Nunes, your announcer, and on behalf of the Diamond High School football team and band members, thank you for your attendance here this evening. Here at the stadium, doors will open at five o'clock. The competition starts at six. We have seven bands. Dartmouth will be on at 8 p.m. So we hope to see you there. Come out and support the students. Also, don't forget, this is being broadcast live on YouTube. If you have someone home that's unable to get here, they can download it and take a look. Also, too, it is rebroadcast on Channel 9 during the week at different times. Returning to the field for the start of the second half, your Dartmouth Indian football team.
Welcome back, everybody, as we get set to call all the action here in the third quarter. A surprising score to most here at the stadium. Aponiquit has the lead at 7-3. to three. But, Paul Santos, before we get to that, is this Dartmouth High School band one of the most amazing high school bands you've ever seen? Oh, it's tremendous. And, you know, the thing that's amazing about it is sustainability. It's just gone on year after year. And you take a look at that production that we just saw now. I mean, if that's not a national championship contender I don't know what is what a terrific performance put on here just dazzling the fans on both sides of the field getting back to the football game surprise score here at the half Dartmouth controlled the entire first half the last two minutes of the first half upon throws a couple of passes one goes for a long touchdown and uh, they've got the lead Paul yeah 76 yard touchdown pass to Lemieux in the Last minute or so, and we thought, hey, maybe they're deep in their territory. Maybe they should run the ball a couple times and see what that produces. But no, they throw it down twice. The first time, incomplete, kind of popped in the air. Maybe even the chance to be intercepted. But no, they go right back to it. And a great pass there by me and for the touchdown. And the only score by the Indians, even though they dominated in ball control, was a 26-yard field goal by Oliver Taradash. That happened before 7-3 upon a crit. Here's the opening kickoff of the third, and it's Saltzman on, Saltzman the, return. on the return. Starts up the middle and crashes over the 24 and out to the 25, 25 yard, line. yard line where they'll have it first and 10, and they have the lead as we start the third quarter. Jim Thompson alongside Andy Thompson. And Paul Holmes. Santos. Yes, sir. Tonight as well, one of the greatest high school hockey announcers this side of Fairhaven. Ah, thank you very much. Really enjoy that. Really Hold looking forward to that. Got to just dress warm. Got to dress warm. That's all. <laughs> First and ten now. Mahan in at the quarterback spot for Aponiquit. Mahan, the quarterback. And they're going to start with a run and look out. It's a big gainer on first. First play of the third quarter down inside Indian Gagnier territory. McCallum. Rambles Gagnier. Jackson Gagnier with a solid right run and a first Will down. Gally. All the way out to the Indian 44-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Aponiquit. Great way to start the second half here. Gagnier, big hole opened up the middle by the offensive line. And look at this, he kind of stumbled. In Indians, two missed tackles at the point of attack, Paul, led to that big gain. And they run it again here to the Gagnon right side. The Gagnier, the ball carrier. Going to mark him down at the 42, a short gain. Second down now for Aponiquit. Which seems to have taken over the momentum since that late touchdown scored in the second quarter. Yeah, what a way to start. Yeah, 30 yard gain there by Gagnier, and now the ball's in enemy territory. We're thinking, okay, the Indians have had a chance to regroup, maybe regroup defensively, regroup offensively, try to get back into the game and have a second half comeback. But Aponiquit is saying, wait a minute, we're going to do something on our first drive. Is a ball picked up by the quarterback, Mahan, and, and the ball is out, and, and I think Aponiquit has recovered it. On the flag. Two fumbles on that, and Aponiquit falls on it. Aponiquit recovers. And that's Gagnier, the running back who fell on the loose ball, keeps the possession for Aponiquit. A loss of about eight on the play. Be third down and... A long way to go here now for the Lakers. I know Aponica wants to come out and be aggressive, but sometimes being a little too aggressive is not going to pay off against Dartmouth defense here. Puts himself in a third and 17. He has a run to the near side, and that's Lemieux with the ball carrier. Brings it inside the... 45 yard line. They'll actually mark it at the 45, but it'll bring up fourth down and just over 10 to go. 45 yard line. It will be fourth and 11 for the Lakers. Now that sack by the Indians one play ago was just what the doctor ordered after the big run there to start the second half by Gagnier. And the Indians will be getting the ball back. We'll see what the Indians do on their first possession of the second half because they've run the ball fairly well, especially to the outside, not to the inside, to the outside. The passing game has been ineffective. We'll see if improvements are made. Lemieux boots it away, and it's a beauty. Estelin calls for a fair catch. And the Indians will have their first possession 
of the second half. They trail by a score of seven to three. I think most people, Andrew, in, in this crowd are stunned by this score. I, I think the standard times uh, who covers high school football very well. Yeah, the Indians win in this one by a score of 35 to seven. Yeah, I mean, it's if you're a Ponquit player, a coach, you're extremely thrilled. You shut down the Dartmouth big plays and had more big plays in Dartmouth throughout the throughout the game. So it's almost the the, the tide is almost turned for Aponica where they're making the big plays and putting Dartmouth in the end, towards their uh, end zone and shut down the big plays and shut down Will Kelly, which has been huge. And there they are, right on cue, shutting down the quarterback. Ran into Jerome Lombardi. Lombardi on the, on the tackle. Lost, loss of one on the play, it will be second and 11. And Lombardi's a small guy, Paul, 6'7". 360 pounds. There he is, number big 76, right in the middle of your screen. Yeah, and he got positioned on the offensive lineman, and Kelly had nowhere to go with a loss of one. Here's Kelly. Here's the rush from the backside. Throws. Got a man out there. Marks has it. He marks down the far sideline. It's a foot race. He cuts it back to the inside. Now the outside. They finally get him down inside the opponent at 20 yard line. Well thrown ball from Will Kelly to Ethan Marks. Wow, that's a 56-yard pass play to Ethan Marks. It looked like it was almost going to be picked off for a second, but the ball just goes over the defensive back and into the arms of Kelly, who makes the most of it after he catches it. Christopher Murray, the defender on that play, he's going to have nightmares tonight. That ball was just off his fingertips, anticipating the interception. Marks comes away with it. The Indians threatening on their first possession of the half. Marks on the carry. Here's Marks twisting and turning his way. Picks up five on the play. Brown makes the stop. I believe that was the first pass completion that we've seen all day by the Indians. They were 0 for 6, including the pass at the end of the half by Marks going into the second half. So that was big. Just barely getting it past the cornerback. Knox goes out to the slot top of his screen. Now in motion. Off the jet street. Fake is Kelly. He's Kelly. Kelly going to go untouched. Touchdown, Dartmouth. Touchdown Kelly. Andrew, that's a play Rick White has had in his offensive stash for many years. And there it is. His quarterback, who's a fine athlete. You got a kid who's run this for three years in this offense. He knows how to read, knows how to react. Patient, patient, hits the hole. Once he hits that hole, he's gone. Good blocking all around, good blocking downfield. Excellent run by Will Kelly. Nice drive by the Indians. Will Kelly to hold. Taradash in for the extra point. And the operation, a little misjudged there by the holder. And the kick is good. That's Kelly. We've got the ball back on cue, and the Indians in the third quarter, it is not make the extra point. Now have a three-point lead at 10 seven. to 7. How important is that score for the Indians, Paul? Wow, that was huge. I mean, you look at that first half. It was really kind of frustrating for the Dartmouth Indians. You know, really couldn't do anything to the interior. You, know, you talked about that big defensive lineman there. Great job by the down lineman all game long. The only time they ever moved the ball was when they ran on the outside and even that wasn't successful all the time passing forget it 0 for 6 in the first half and then in the second half the ability to make that pass play I mean that was huge that pass play that um, Marks Kelly made to Marks you have 56 yards right down the middle and then Marks almost was down the right side and Marks almost broke it for a touchdown if anything that loosened things up now they're thinking oh wait a minute now they're going to go to the passing game and then the run by Kelly up the middle 25 yards Tara dash the extra point and the Indians just like that, have taken it back, 10 to 7, 7:55 to go here in the third. Big score by the Indians. Well, I think this is going to be a big drive here by Pongo. Do they come back and answer? Does Dartmouth's defense hold them a three and out or a short drive and Dartmouth get the ball back with that momentum and get up 17-7? And then if you're a Pongo, you're in trouble that way. Freitas to kick it away for Dartmouth High School now has regained the lead. Early on here in the third. This is Gagnier. Gagnier's got running room. Gagnier finally going to be stopped as he crossed the 
35 yard line to mock him down at the 36. He ran right into Jared Abreu. And Abreu was helped out by a few of his teammates, but this young man, Gagne, he runs hard, Paul. Yeah, he really got some speed going. That was in excess of a 20 yard return to give Aponiqui good field position. So, you know, Andy was talking about Aponiqui needing to answer here. Well, they got decent field position at their own 35. Here's the lefty quarterback. He's got a man open, and Kelly's back there to defend it. Open for a minute was Lemieux, and that ball just hung in the area in just a second. I think Lemieux saved that interception. He turned. He, he became a defender midway through. Uh, the ball was in the air, and Will Kelly had it and almost had a fair catch, but Lemieux came from behind and actually broke that play up. Nice play by him. It's kind of a heave job by the quarterback here, too, just on his back foot and just tosses it. And Lemieux makes the play on Kelly, actually, and saves an interception. Nice play. Looked like the fact that he was forced to use his back foot to throw the ball resulted in it being underthrown. Devin Wilson looks like he's suffering from a cramp. Although we never like to venture a guest. Paul Santos is the resident doctor in the broadcast booth here tonight. <laughs> you've um, you've had that stretch before, haven't you? <laughs> I, I have had that stretch, as a matter of fact, Paul. When I'm in, uh, when I'm in Florida for the most of the winter, I go to a stretch class. <laughs> and I used to be 4'10", and now I'm 5'9". <laughs> Well, you know, I, I went to physical therapy one time, and, uh, you know, they do those leg lifts like that. And then they say, do them when you get home. The only problem is when you get home, you have to lift the leg yourself. Yes. It's totally different when somebody else is lifting the leg for you, you know. I kind of like it when somebody else lifts the leg and you don't have to do anything. You just kind of lay there. Yeah. Well, hopefully he's not injured too badly, but he's definitely slow to get up, so. Yeah, that, anyone that's ever had uh, leg cramps. Kevin Williams walks off the field under his own power. Football players among the toughest. Oh, no question. He looks like me after that stretch class that I take in the wintertime. I come home and Sue says, how you doing? I said, I don't know. I won't be able to walk for two or three days. <laughs> oh, but it's going to work. Yeah, really. Second and ten for the Lakers. Second and ten for Aponiquit. Man rolls, has time, throws, incomplete. Lemieux was the intended receiver, and I'm not sure he was on the same page as his quarterback. I don't think anybody saw the ball in that play. I don't think the top of the saw. I don't think Lemieux saw. Everyone was kind of just running downfield and shocked that the ball landed five yards next to him. Can't blame the lights here anymore. Seemed like when the quarterback was dropping back, he was spinning to sort of like, you know, the opposite way. And, and that would result in him, you know, taking a little bit longer to release it. But yeah, Lemieux looked like he didn't know where the ball was. He never saw it. Never saw it. Oh, man, now facing third and long. I'm going to throw far sideline. He throws it right into his bench. Looked like he had Lemieux there on the, on the flat again. And just overshot his uh, target. So they'll... Have to punt it away to the Indians with 7.25 to go. Poniquit going completely against the running game. They are throwing three times, 0 for 3. And now forced the punt. Well, the defense did their job. If the offense come out and make a couple big plays and get up 17-7, that's going to be a huge turnaround for Dartmouth. And here's the kick in the... Two Dartmouth kids, returnees, get away from it. Don't pick it up. He picks it up anyway, and now he's going to try to come to the near side. Esterlin on the carry. That's Esterlin, and he takes a solid pop out of bounds. You could hear the Dartmouth coaches upstairs say, get away from it. Logan Raposa knocked, knocked him out of bounds at the end. That was awfully dangerous. 
That's probably the first thing they taught that kid to, if it's on the ground bouncing, get away from it. You can hear the coaches upstairs screaming, get away from it. it will be first and ten the, the game gets intense, he wants to make a play, I understand that, but you're better off this point in the game, in this field position in the game, let it bounce the extra 10 yards and, and start first and 10 instead of trying to make a play. And then he gets drilled on the sideline, which I'm sure doesn't feel wonderful either. First and 10 Indians. Clock stopped here with 7.09 to play in the third. Here's Estelin looking for room right side. And there's a Haas caller tackle. And that's a flag to be called on all right. Very good. We're going to see this right here. This was as clear as day. So there was no question about this call. You can see the way he just grabbed him right around the back of the neck. And Preliminary signals, personal foul kind of like against a the Lakers. Classic horse collar tackle. And that's a play where the offensive player, you can cause serious injury. Uh, with tackles like that, and that's why it's a personal foul. And personal foul. You, know, you see it at the Plus pro level, and every, and every time you do, you just penalty. wonder if there's going to be a, a real Automatic neck injury, a shoulder down. injury, because those guys are so big, and your momentum's going forward, and someone's jerking the, your First neck backwards. For the Indians on their own 47 yard line. First and ten for the Indians. And here's Kelly. And a little hole up there, scoots his way for a gain of four. Ball is out to the 48 yard line of Aponiquit. You know, Paul, across the way, working the sticks. We have two Dartmouth High School Hall of Famers over there Paul O'Connor in the great Wally Farrier. Fellow barrister. Yes. And the running play goes nowhere as Aponiquit. An interior line done a down. nice job on Marks. No gain on the play. By the way, mentioning Wally Ferry, I think it's his grandson, a terrific yeah, athlete. Actually, a gain of one on the play. Wally is on the forty-seven yard line of the Lakers. Now we have similar situation on the other side with an Aponiquit player being worked on. I think that's Gallagher, which would be Law, good loss for Aponquit if he's unable to return with cramps and we have Wilson on Dartmouth side. He looks like he's up and moving at least. So but Gallagher's been their all-around guy for Aponquit, so that's a tough, tough loss if he's going to set out a couple plays. You know, we used to do the fan of the game. You guys remember that? Yes. Yeah, so you haven't been doing it. We haven't been doing it this year, so I think we're going to institute it right now. You guys in the truck ready for this? <laughs> Hello, you guys there? Okay, we're good. Okay, so what we do now is we have the camera guy, and they go around, and the unsuspecting fan gets a free pizza and a cocktail from FaZe, but they don't know it. They don't know they win. They have to watch the game, so they have to be over 18. Let's start with that. So we got to find an adult. Uh, no, the booth doesn't count. Uh, come on, cameraman, you got to zoom in on. So, as far as zoom, how about the, whoa? <laughs> that guy, that guy right there, in the uh, in the sweatshirt. There he is. Okay, so sir, you have won a face pizza of your choice, and a cocktail, courtesy of uh, Doc Dooms, our public Jackson, address announcer. Jackson, Jackson so Gary. just go down the face, say you were a fan of the game. And uh, tell them that Doc Noons from Dartmouth High School's public address announcer um, was paying for the pizza. But the most certainly will not come out of town's funds. We do all that. Doc's a very honest guy. But um, so that's it. So if you see yourself on TV, congratulations. You'll be, you'll be thrilled, won't he, Paul? Yeah, congratulations. The fan of the game, DC TV, Dartmouth Community Media. You walk right into. Where is he walking into? Phase? Phase. Walk phase. into phase. And make sure you get there before 7 o'clock because it closes awful early nowadays. And then you say, Doc Noon sent me, and then see what the person behind the counter says. Exactly. <laughs> In other words, bring your own money. Third and five. Third and five for the Indians. Here's Kelly up the ball fake, throws the ball's deflected and falls incomplete. The ball is tipped intended for. 
And let's see what Coach Escalade. White will do here. He's going to send on the special teams. I think this was the same play that they ran earlier where they had uh, J.J. open across the middle for would have been a touchdown, but Kelly just a little too, little too late in the pass, a little too hard. And luckily, again, that no deflection for an interception there for Kelly. So just when you think that you know, the Indians might be getting to that Aponico defense, they continue to make plays when they need to to hang around. I'm not sure whether you were right that that was intended for Esterlin. And I think Chow might have jumped in the way and put his hands up and uh, actually caused a deflection. High snap, look oh. out, well over the puncher's head. And now not much for him to do in a Poniquit. Can they capitalize off a of Dartmouth mistake? Martin's head. Martin, the punter, had no choice. That sailed well over his head. Huge special teams mistake here by the Dartmouth Indians. We saw one, a bad snap earlier in the game, not on special teams, but by Poniquet. And look at this right here. It just slipped four white shirts around him, nothing really he could do. And what a huge opportunity here for Poniquet. Bad mistake by the Indians there. Low snap, and that's going to go for a loss of a couple. Gagney at the ball carrier. Gagney at the ball carrier, brought down by a host of Indians led by Josh Miller. you got to wonder whether a Pontiquet has a no kicking game, game like play. the Indians because they're pretty close. So if they can't get a first down or maybe, you know, they don't get in the end zone, would they be able to come back and try to tie this game up with a field goal or something to kind of have in the back of your mind? I did see in pregame the kicker was kicking just short from about the 25-yard line. So I think they do have a little bit of a leg. And there's a high snap and a miscue. And Lemieux did a nice job off the deflection from his quarterback, Mahan. So that's a loss. And that's going to back them up Miller. to about the 28-yard line. We'll call it third down and about 18. Now a number of, line, a loss of seven. plays in a row with not so good execution. One by the Indians, of course. They gave Aponiquit this great opportunity. And then two here in a row by Aponiquit after having been given this great opportunity. Third and long. Mahan rolls left. Still rolling. Throws. Caught. And that's down at the 10-yard line. And that's enough for a first down. Chris Murray on the reception. And that'll move to sticks. Well, you see him rolling out to his left this time. And obviously with the left-handed quarterback. And... Nice release, wide open receiver of Murray, and he caught the ball right at the first down marker. They needed 18, they got 18. First and goal. Here's Gagne ripping one up through the left guard. Picks up a couple. Ball is on the four yard line, it will be second and goal. Poniquit looking to capitalize off the special team's mistake. They trail 10-7, 340 to go in the third. Gagnier, Gagnier again looking for running Gagnier. room and runs into the front yeah, seven of the Indians. Indians. Short gain, if any. Looks like the ball is going to be marked at the two. There for the Indians was Devin Wilson. Devin Wilson and Danny Martin on the tackle. Third down and goal from the, the two. Ball is on the four yard line. Correction, two yard line. Third and goal from the two. Keg near the lone runner. And they hand it off to the man in motion, and that's a touchdown that's for Vincent Oliveri. And Aponiquit retakes the lead. Nice call there by Aponiquit, a little misdirection.
two down, two yard touchdown run by Vincent Oliveri. And the crowd getting restless here on the Dartmouth side as Oponiquit has stunned them and have taken the lead. It is a special team's mistake and we have whistles that stop the play. And I think the knee may have gone down. I think he caught it with his knee on the ground, so it would make yeah. him down. I yeah, it makes him down. So there's no extra point try. And we'll look on here at the holder. And calm down right there, right? Yep, he's, he's down with the possession of the football with a knee down. So they had a chance to make it a two possession game right there, Paul. That mistake makes it a one possession game. Oh, here we go. What's going on now? Now they're going to retry it. Well, these, this crew has had a tough night. I, I don't understand how you just do make up a replay, you just make a play up. Now, right now, the Indians with their kicking game, they could come down and tie the game down three. Now they're getting an opportunity to get the four point lead. Second time. But what was the call? High snap. Huh. The Indians block it. And the play is dead. So after all that commotion, the Indians come in and block the point after touchdown attempt. And the score remains upon it with 13, Dartmouth High School 10. Nice play by Will Kelly coming off the edge here, gets the block. So the Indians trail here by three with 2.44 to go. This is just an odd game. Wow, I'll tell you. It's, it's a strange game of mistakes. Was there any explanation given about that extra point? What? Why was it done twice? There was no signal. There was no reason to do it. Oh, another inadvertent oh, whistle. That's the second time tonight. Oh, that's our guess. That's my thought. That's Doc Noons' thought. I'll go with it. He has made inadvertent mistakes on the school committee, too. I mean, he knows what inadvertent <laughs> mistakes are. <laughs> Does anyone in this booth? Or if a facial expression could kill there, I'll tell you, you got that little. Oh, we go. Back. I know. I gave you, he gave you that evil eye from Way the corner of his eye. <laughs> early 70s. Wow, that's We're the 70s. Old. Wow. Shot kick once again, and the Indians field it on one knee so they can't advance it. But they'll have the football across their 30 to, to about the 32 yard line. Catching the kickoff with Jared Abreu. Perhaps if he could have kept off. his balance, Andrew, he could have gone another 10 yards. Yeah, it's just simple mistakes that they're making that they haven't made all year so far. And I'm sure if they watch the film after this It'll game, there's going to be a lot of pauses and, 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 and you know, rewinds about what they can do better and what, what's expected. I mean, that's you, you can't catch the ball on your knees and expect to advance it. Just a simple mistake. Kelly up the ball fake, runs into his own man, Kelly bounces Kelly. off of him and carries it across the 40 to the 41 where he's going to be close to a first down. Paul, talk about an athletic quarterback. Wow, what a gutsy run there by Will Kelly. An individual effort, really. Obviously, helping him was his offensive line, but really he got stonewalled and then just kept just battling and battling, and he did get the gain of 10 for the Dartmouth Indian first down. The Indians. There's Marks got running room here on the near side. He's across the 50, 45, 40. Down the sideline he goes. He's finally going to be knocked out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. Gagnier, Jackson Gagnier, has played both ways in this game, made the stop. Gagnier and Salzman on the knocked them out of bounds. At the 33 Comes Marks, patient running, gets outside, turns the field. Good blocking by Dylan Gomes on the outside. Nice play, keeps his feet in bounds. Steps out right there. 33-yard yeah. gain there by Ethan Marks. First and 10 for the Indians. Oh, Kelly has him on the mar on the march. Rolls right. 
Here comes the rush from behind, dumps it in the flat, throws it at the feet of his intended receiver. Tender for Will Chow. Will Chow was the intended receiver on that play. The ball not delivered well, bring up second down. I think he just hung on to that ball a little bit too long, waited a little bit too long, took a hit at the end of that, throws it early, has a chance to make a completion and get upfield for a first down possibly. Estelin, motion man's got it. Looking to get it wide, avoids the first guy and gets tackled out of bounds along the far sideline. Caleb Prochecci. I'm having a hard time with that name. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> so the ball is on the 28-yard line. 1.45 to go. Clock stopped here at the stadium. Indians trying to mount a threat. Kelly. Marks on the carry. The marks, and Marks is going to be a couple of yards short. It's tough running inside tonight for the Indians. There's some big boys up there for Aponiquit, and here comes, know, here comes big number 76 out there. It'll so. be, it'll be Jerome Lombardi. Yeah. Fourth and four. Six, seven, 360. Well, just, there he is at the top of your screen. You can't miss him. Yeah, that's a space eater. Indians going for it on fourth and four. Kelly going to throw it out here to the flat. He overthrows a wide open man. Incomplete. He was wide open in the flat. Was Esterlin. And Will Kelly's had a tough night throwing the football. That play was well designed on fourth down and just floated it out there incomplete. I think his timing's been off all night long with these with these pass routes. He's either throwing too late or just threw that way too early. I mean, he had plenty of time. He was wide open. Just set your feet and, and make, the, make the pass. He had plenty of time back there to, to take another second and set his feet even more and, and make that pass and just float it out there too high. He'll look on film tomorrow and a lot of things, but that play in particular, that play could have gone for a first down and a long run after catch had he hauled it in. And they say put the hands, the ball into the hands of the playmakers and Estrelin is certainly one of them and if he had been able to haul that ball in, it was about 20 yards of space right in the other side of him. So Poniquit will take over. First and 10, clinging to a three point lead. And they run it here on first down, and Josh Salsman. Miller Salsman slams the, the running back, Saltzman down on the ground. Josh Miller on the tackle. No gain, actually, they're going to mark him for a two-yard loss. Here's big number 55, Josh Miller. It will be second and 11. Perhaps give one more play here in the third quarter. This is where Ponikwitz usually just kept the ball on the ground all night long. They don't tend to throw it until they get to at least 35-40. So maybe they change it up or maybe they stay on the ground. Mahan hands it off. Plenty of running room. That's the big running back, Jackson Gagne, who's had a Jackson big Gagne night. He's got himself a gain of 13 and a first down. Aaron Dutra on the tackle. And he is still down. Here's his teammate helping him out with a cramp. Official on the plate. Patrick Kane uh, came off the field for Dartmouth as well. Patrick Crane, excuse me. Referee has started the clock on the field. And that'll end the third quarter. So at the end of three, our score is Aparticwit 13, Dartmouth High School 10. Quarter, it is 
I guess the three of us should know the rules, but I thought when it was an injured player, there was a timeout. I've never seen a referee restart the clock with an injured player. But this could be uh, just uh, a poor night for this, uh, for this crew. All right, it was still 16 seconds, so seemingly there would have been an opportunity to run another play. Yeah, I, it, it's a it's a timeout, and maybe we can ask the referee to our right. Yeah, well, there you go. There's a, Neither do we. Yeah, we don't. We won't mention the referee next to us, but <laughs> he agrees with us. I think he said they don't know what something they're doing, hmm. and I would agree with him. I'll be nice. Yeah, be, yeah. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> Remember town residents watch this, and nowadays you can't say anything bad about anybody know. because yeah, they're doing, they're they'll be canceled. They're doing a great job. Whatever they're doing out there, it's, right. it's wonderful. Yeah. Keep up the good work. I'll say it for you. It's perhaps yeah. the worst officiating crew I've seen this year. They just had a bad night. And when I own my business, I had bad days too, so I get it. But I've never seen with an injured player a referee start the clock. But again, they've struggled. Oh, well, never! No explanation on anything either. It just right. The extra point that they tried yeah. twice. Yeah, it's just we don't know why the first time didn't count. Well, there's a quick throw to the far side, juking a man and picking up an extra couple yards. Mayon's pass. Is on the reception was Lemieux. Long to Lemieux. Danny Martin on the tackle. Game of four on the second play. down at six. It will be second and six. Ball is on the Monaco 43. We're into the fourth quarter, believe it or not. Man, we're talking about a Monaco hanging around, not only hanging around, they're up by three. We're into this game for two hours already. I'm getting text messages from unnamed friends to tell me to be nice on the, on the air, so I will be nice. Here's a pass out here. It just goes over. The intended receiver's arms. That was Saltzman, the intended receiver. And that stops the clock. Still second down and long. It will be third down and six. Dane Fife across the way, the headband for the Lakers of Aponiquit. Hey, Aponiquit was running the ball pretty much all the time in the first quarter. And we were wondering when we were going to see me and throw it. And then all of a sudden, Starting in the second quarter, he started heaving it around like Coach White predicted that he would, and he's had some decent success with it. And here they try to run it on third and long. The Indians still trying to get the runner down, and he advances his way out close to the first down yard as needed. And that was Lemieux, the ball carrier. Lemieux on the carry. And he's going to be just short. Can we run that back again, fellas? Time out on the field for an official measurement. We wait the guys in the truck to rewind that for us. You want to see the ball spot? I want to see if momentum was stopped. Just slow it down, guys. He is shot less than a foot. He so stopped most, right there. He stopped. Most referees would have blown the whistle there, but not this, not these guys. Fourth down and a couple to go. A couple of chains. A couple of links. <sighs> Paul, did you think his forward momentum was stopped? Well, you know, when they played it back, it was in slow motion, so I was trying to see whether or not, you know, that pause in real time would have been different, but, yeah, it was close. Well, here's a big play in the ball game. Fourth and short, this shy of midfield. inches for the Lakers. Turn and hand it off. And that's going to be enough for a first down. 
Lakers will possess the football. Eat up some clock. I'm sure people are watching on YouTube or on the carry. That's enough for a doing first Facebook and, It'll be first and, ten for and tweeting their friends. The Most people, Paul, along the South Coast would not believe the score. Right, exactly. I mean, as you said before, the local sports writers were predicting a pretty hefty Indian win today, and Aponiquit has definitely come to play. Here's May in the quarterback. He's got time, slings it out. It's caught for a first down, down to the 44 yard the line. Chris Murray on the down catch. The 44 yard line. So they throw it on first down. Gain of five. And they pick up five. Second and five. They're just finding spaces in the Dartmouth defense in the zone that they're running. They're just picking them apart. I mean, there's, every time they complete a pass, it's in that flatter in that open zone area, and there's just nobody around for Dartmouth, and it's just running perfect, and he's an accurate passer. I think that's what they were afraid of going into this week. They, they said they can sling it, and it's pretty accurate. Take a time off the clock. They look to the sideline. We're approaching that nine-minute mark. Aponiquit possession of the football. Oh, and they lose it momentarily. It's oh. still loose. And Aponiquit recovers it. Oliveri diving on it for the Lakers. Oliveri recovers the fumble. I think that's three fumbles. Dartmouth's had a chance to recover tonight and has not been able to recover any of them. It'll be third and 13. Seen a lot of bad execution tonight on snaps and, you know, special teams, offense. You know, balls being dropped and not being handled cleanly. Third and 12 now for John Mahan in his offense. He's going to roll to the far sideline. He's going to sling it. Catches. Oh, oh, in and out of the hands. And that would, would have been after the run, after the catch, it would have been a first down. In and out of the hands of Saltzman. Saltzman. That was right on the numbers. The Again, another team. accurate pass. It will be fourth and 13. So the Indians, Paul, dodge a bullet. 14. Yeah, 14. for sure. You know, plenty of time here, 834 to go. You look at that clock and you think, uh-oh, that's inching down. But clearly plenty of time for the Indians. But it's just that when they've had possession of the ball, it's been uneven two. production. You don't know what you're going to get. Every Four. once in a while you get a 35-yard gain, but then the next time two yards up the middle and that's it. We've done Pontiquit's done a good job stopping the Indian run game. There's an Australian type kick. Get away from it. Get away from it, Esterlin. And he does. You can hear those Indian coaches above us cringing. On I was special team. <laughs> I was cringing for the kid. Well, the Indians have it now, Paul. First and ten deep in their own territory. Just over eight minutes to go, trailing by three. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they draw up here. As we said, they've been inconsistent offensively. The passing game really empty in the first half, a little bit better in the second. The running game, the interior line of Aponiquin, the linebackers have closed it up. The only big gains have been to the outside occasionally. They've done a little better in the second half. What will happen here? We'll see what they draw up. And they run it up the gut. And Marks goes nowhere all game long. That interior defense, actually, that's Estrell in the ball carry. All game long, that defensive front, Paul, has stymied the Indians inside running game. Right, from the beginning of the game, too. I mean, right all along, you think maybe things would have loosened up a little bit with some of the running calls for the outside and the occasional success. And a couple of pass completions here in the second half. But no, the inside is a no. And it's continuing to be that way even in the fourth quarter. Second and 11. Marks has it. Marks on the carry. Looking to turn the corner. He's out across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Perhaps picked up four, but it'll bring up third down and long. And we have a couple of players down. This is a big third down play here for the Indians because, you know, you don't want to have to give the ball back to Aponiquit, stop them again, and then get the ball back. 26 yard line. Will Chow is the Indian player down, and I can't quite see who the Aponiquit youngster is. And quite a few players banged up tonight, too, with cramps and other minor injuries. Yeah. 
Still plenty of time left in this one, fellas. 7.23 to go. Well, we have a break in the action. Um, did want to mention we had a chance to chat with great Dartmouth running back and NFL star Jordan Todman on New Bedford Guide the other day. It's still up there posted. And what a gentleman and what a class act. And, you know, it was real easy for myself and Chris Santos to do the interview because his answers were so insightful, so enjoyable, so interesting. And he had a lot to say about the big Brady Belichick bash, but also his career in general and what he's doing now and so forth. So if you have a chance to catch that, that's the other JT, Jordan Todman. Well, I, c I can remember I uh, uh, had a great honor bestowed upon me getting into the Dartmouth High School Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Same night Jordan Todman did, but when he was a sophomore, we were at FaZe, and we used to see him after the game all the time. A group of us would go down there, a couple of the uh, players on that team. And Jordan came up to me as a sophomore, and he said, uh, Mr. Thompson? I said, yes, Jordan, how are you? Nice to meet you. He said, I just want you to know there's another JT in town. <laughs> and I said, well, yes. I said, this one you're looking at is very old and on his way out. Oh, that's great. And uh, what a privilege to call four years of uh, Dartmouth High football during his era. Great players on that team and good kids. Here's a pass down the middle of the field. It's cut wide open. And the Indians are going to take a long score going in and three for the touchdown. Nice play. 74 yards. Touchdown pass from Lord Yard to Patrick Crane. Patrick Crane on the reception and touchdown. Wow, how about this? Blown coverage and a great call by the Dartmouth Indians. Look at how wide open Patrick Crane is. There's no one within seven or eight yards of him. And all he had to do was run all the way down the field. 74 yard touchdown run. And the Indians have taken the lead back from the Lakers. I think that's also the first time Will Kelly has set his feet, taken his time, and made an accurate pass all night. I mean, when you needed it, you came through for him. So Terry Dash in. Four the extra point, extra make point. it a two possession game. It's up and I think it's wide no, to the left. To the so left. special teams has played a big role in this so game. Do we get a redo? No, no redo. So we're gonna watch this, we're gonna have a little laugh because this is me if I'm a referee. Watch Crane. All right, he's got it. He's gonna go for the touchdown. Now watch this official. He's Jimmy Thompson, look at, oh, oh, geez, no. No, no, I can't do this. Yes, he made it. That'd be me. I'm making fun of myself. No, could you have just done a pivot and just called it <laughs> no, wherever I'm you were? No, worse than that guy. <laughs> you could have just stayed where you were and called it. There was nobody going to get him but anyway. When you're the back judge like that, nothing happens really in high school football. So when you see a long play like that, your legs haven't moved all night long. Mm -hmm. And that was me. I was not making fun of that guy because I would have been worse. Did you officiate at one time? Or? I did. Yeah. Yep, I did. You didn't ask me what. <laughs> if you're any good or not. I, I, no, I it, just figured I'd leave it at that. Yeah, I, 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 I refereed uh, uh, Pony League basketball and Little League basketball. Oh. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I was well known. They couldn't wait to ditch me. <laughs> There's another JT in town. There's I like that. JT. That's, That's like when. Story. Isn't that when Tom Brady told. Um, Tom Brady told Robert, Robert Kraft, Robert yeah, this is the best decision you're ever going to make. <laughs> when the first day they met him in the runway. Oh, yeah, I know you. You're the sixth round, you know, sixth round pick. Yeah, the, I'm the best decision that you ever made. And when they called me that I was going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame, I said, that's the worst mistake you've ever made. Here's the Pontiquit now. They're special teams. And they run it out across the 25-yard line. Where they'll have it first and 10, now trailing. GT Charrier on the tackle. It was Saltzman on the return. The market just shy of the 30 yard line. Six minutes and 45 seconds to go. Now the Indians call Santos with a three point lead. You got to throw it on the quarterback, Mahan, if you're the opponent with coach. Yeah, absolutely. And he's really done a good job throwing the ball, rolling out, making some plays. The pressure is on right now. We're down to the 645 mark, and now the Aponiquid Lakers are behind. But I'll tell you, they've really given the Indians all they can handle tonight. But And more. Yeah, and more. But, you know, they're coming in here. They're not looking for a mall of victory. They're looking to pull off the upset, and they want to come right back at the Indians. So look what they did in the closing seconds of the half. So don't count them out. 
His man, here comes the rush. And he gets the away rush. from it. Momentarily, the ball's loose. Did he throw it forward or was it a fumble? I believe they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. Now, the Indians' defense could credit them there because they were having none of me and dropping back to throw the ball. He just came right at him very hard with a big pass rush. But I'm not sure how Meehan got that ball away. Second down and 10 now for Aponiquit. Who's he throwing it to? Good question, Paul. Two hours and 15 minutes so far in this one. It's like watching a baseball game. It never ends. Is the rush. Throws it over the middle. Oh. And nearly intercepted. Eskelin is back there for Dartmouth Jackie High School. Lemieux was the intended receiver. He he the nice play by J.J. there, breaking that play up. And it's been a couple, couple of hard hits over the middle for the Indians tonight. And J.J. Eskelin. It will be third and ten. Devin Wilson with a good rush that time for the Indians. Meehan did a great job getting that into the arms of the intended receiver under the good pass rush by the Dartmouth defensive front. But it was that bang, bang play that caused the ball to come loose. Here's Meehan rolling, rolling, being chased, throws it here. Near it may be intercepted, almost picked off here at the near sideline, but not Main quite. Pass. Dylan Gomes. Gomes. Secondary player for the Indians got his hands on it, it reflected it away, and Pontiquit now will be forced to punt the football away. The Indians should get good field position here. Yeah, nice anticipation on this throw out here by Dylan Gomes, cutting in front of him, making up the play there, and breaking up the pass. So the Indians have improved their pass rush on me and not giving him time to get set and pick his spot downfield. Well, special teams has been key in this game. Several mistakes on both sides, and there's a low one hopper to the punter. And Eskelin feels it only at his own 48-yard line. The Indians will have it first. And they have the lead at 16 to 13, just over six minutes to go. I'm Jim Thompson alongside Paul Santos, Andrew Thompson as well. We hope you enjoy these telecasts of Dartmouth High School football cablecast by Dartmouth Community Media. You can catch us on Channel 9 throughout the week. We rebroadcast the games. And not only can you watch the game, Paul Santos, but your favorite marching band. Look in on them as well. That's right. At halftime, you see a holding penalty against the Indians. But, yes, at halftime, what a tremendous show they put on. And we saw that, that gentleman out front with the rifle tossing it up in the air and everything else. And really dazzling the crowd here in addition to the great music in the background and the, the crisscrossing patterns and so forth. And You know, times have changed. Back in the 70s when uh, we had the color guard or whatever they call it nowadays, those rifles were loaded. It's a big change, you know. I, I never I never trusted the, the person with that thing. They, you know, they, they, they were, things yeah, have they changed. Were loaded. No, it's not, you know. <laughs> That's it. Then Doc Noon's getting interested in the band, and they they stop loading the rifles. And I'm sure there's parents out there going, "Is that true?" And here we go, Andrew. This, this is your favorite. Now they've oh. called the flag. No. no. And Ricky White is beside himself down here. Like you can't, you can't. What could you possibly be talking about? Did you throw the darn thing, or you did? I got text to be nice, so I'm going to be nice because this looks like a picnic party out here or something. The guy in the middle in the black hat threw the flag, and this guy in the left here is the only way I'm talking, so I don't really know what's going on. The referee is Daniel Como there in white hat trying to assess the situation and get the information, and now he's going to the other side to talk to the opponent coach. Uh, you know, if you're a head coach, you're just saying to yourself, we coach all week. 12 hours a week, and you guys screw it up in 45 minutes. And now here's Ricky walking across the way like, come on, guys and girls. The thing in the stoppages of play tonight have just been <laughs> tough to deal with. The game never gets any kind of momentum. It's just Didn't they at a stale play, uh, pace here. 
I thought they called the hold. How difficult can it be after you make the call? It's the hold or not. There wasn't multiple flags in the field. And then you see the three down the bottom of your screen. They're having a, you know, they go to me and Ed's or where do they go? They're just having a, go for a beer after, what do we do? <laughs> and here comes this guy across and Ricky's probably ready to let him have it, but. Now listen to me, Rick. I've been wrong all night, but just hear me out. <laughs> Rick saying, "Yeah, mm -hmm. we need a lip reader." He's, at, he's at, asking for. He says, "Phase." Ricky says, "That's down that way." And this is what drives you crazy if you're a coach. And I did coach for a while. You either talk to the referee. What is the other guy talking about? The guy in the white hat's in charge. They don't need the other guy to come and talk to him. You getting any more text, Andrew? Because <laughs> I'm sure I'm getting some. Don't be nice anymore. Is that what it's we've had? Now? We've had one loyal viewer all night, though. Tom Balstracci up in Boston has been watching oh. the entire night. Very excited to listen to us on play-by-play. -play. Well, Tom was a tremendous athlete at New Bedford High School. Then played football over at Brown. And he's got a nice career as an attorney up there in the Boston area. This looks like one of his litigations going on down here. Yes, I'm sure Tom is up there saying I could have uh, made myself a couple of grand on this and <laughs> solved this no problem. We've got Paul Santos as a local attorney. And this has been nine minutes, in case you're watching at home. And Tom was an outstanding player, and I'm sure he's up in Boston going, dear God, it's a high school football game. What could they possibly be talking about on a hold? Well, Tom also texted me and said he had this gentleman when he played. Yep. And he said, just as good tonight as he was back then. <laughs> so well. what, here we go. Holding against the Indians. And they're going to give the ball to a Ponticoat off the hold. Holding call. <laughs> that's not even, that's, that, that's not real. It was these, down, they these the people. football. God awful. Jeez, so it's right. first and ten upon a quick call. The fans on this side are really letting the officials have it. Here's the throw, and it's almost picked off. In and out of the hands of Martin. Lions, he had it. It is first down for a Ponequid. Lions pass almost picked off by Danny Martin. Yep. It's incomplete. It will be second and ten. Ball is on the Ponequid 30. Kind of threw this one into traffic guy. a little bit. Well, maybe not directly into a green jersey. But, you know, the last play before that conference happened so long ago. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the last thing was that happened. Second down and 10. He has a running play in the Indians. Left side of the defense does a good job. No gain. Ball carrier was Lemieux. Bring up third down and ten. You on a met by a host of Indians. Last couple of possessions Led of a where the Dodgers defense has stepped up. The wind, no the stadium the is, no one's breathing. The referees have just ruined the game. As if you're a fan, or if you're watching this on YouTube or during the week, there's no rhythm to this game. I didn't know how these kids can even pay attention. It must be so frustrating to be a player and a coach. Third down and long. And that ball is on the ground. Man gets gets the rebound off the turf and picks himself up and gets a first Game down the off the miscue. Unbelievable. We've seen just about everything knocked in this out game. Of, out of bounds. Well, that's unfortunate from the Dartmouth point of view because that's they've done a good job defensively the last couple down. of possessions. They've taken the upon a quit offense on and created a lot of trouble for them and it looked like they were going to get the ball back easily 
One, two, three, and out. And all of a sudden on a broken play, a play that really wasn't executed well at all, Meehan makes an individual play and turns it into a first down. So he has his team at midfield, first and ten. Looks to throw, throws over the middle, it's completed. And that's going to be just short of the first down, Eight. gain of nine. Pass. Just keeps throwing those Saltzman windows. That was Saltzman on the reception. Ball is on. Moves the football down to the 40-yard line. Yard line. Second down and short. It'll be second and one. 419 and counting here in the fourth. The Indians defense being called upon again to come up with a big stop here for Aponiquit. Coming into the game, they had just let up seven points on the season. And they run it to the right side, plenty of running room and getting down to the 30-yard line. That's Lemieux on the and That's enough to move the chain along the far sideline. Brings the ball down to the 30-yard line at the end. Lemieux has had himself a game, not only the running the ball the all evening for the Aponica Lakers, but line. the reception, that 76-yard touchdown pass in the closing moments of the first half was a huge play for the Lakers tonight. About to go into the locker room behind and big, big pass down the field. Really opened some eyes here at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Here's Mahan rolls near side. Still's got it. Still has it. Throws complete. Mahan's pass and is that's complete. Inside the 15 yard line. And that's Saltzman. Saltzman finally game tackle down inside the 15 yard line. Brought down by Patrick Crane and Ethan Max. So the Lakers, Paul Santos, threatening here late with just over three minutes to go. Great job there by Aponiquit executing well, a 15-yard gain by Aponiquit. Ball's down at the Diamond 15-yard line. They're knocking on the door. They're trailing by three. The Indians looking for a big defensive stop if... Aponiquit gets into the end zone. The Indians are going to be called upon to go the length of the field. But first things first, can the Indians defense stop them? And they run it to the left side into the hands of Lemieux. Lemieux Twists his way down, perhaps a yard. Um, if you're Aponiquit, though, the last field goal you attempted got blocked. Dan so with 2.30 to Jackson. go, you almost want to score here. Obviously you want to score, but you don't want to leave it up to your kicking team again. There's been a couple of special teams miscues. Already tonight on both sides, so 2.28 left. Let's get down to. Official timeout. I don't know, official timeout. What a shock, the officials have it at timeout. Oh. I mean, there must be an injury play. Mm. Danny Martin, sir. Okay. So, looks like Danny Martin may have something. If it's an official timeout, they can't huddle. These referees have lost control of everything. Sam Madden telling the referee if Pontiquit's team's talking to his coach along the sideline, that's not within the rules of play. But the rules of play tonight have been controversial for sure. Man rolls. He still has it. He's got to be hit. Sacked what is that? Pick it up. 20 yard line. Tackled by Patrick Crane. Patrick Crane, the touchdown maker, and a flag is down. I think that's intentional grounding. Well, you'd think. And there was, yeah, you could hear the Dartmouth coaches screaming holding, but. So these guys will huddle. Watch number eight, Patrick Crane just charge in on Meehan as Meehan rolled again to the opposite side. And he had room and time, but then all of a sudden, here comes Crane and just Held blindsides him. Was that a fumble? How did the ball advance without him throwing the ball? Right, it looked like it came loose as he was going down. Right. He did not throw the ball. So arguably, that was a fumble. Maybe we could see that again. So the call on the field, by the way, is the illegal man downfield. So let's see, Andrew, you walk us through it. So there's a hold there on 18. And then as he gets down, the where does he throw the ball? Where does that ball, how does that a pass? 
That's a fumble. That is a clear. Uh, all right, we're in make believe zone here, the, these referees are. Dartmouth coaches above us. The fans on the Dartmouth yeah, side of the field are really is laying into true, the officials. Is this had a, a bad night, and we have to be very careful of what we say because we are town employees and we try to be nice. But you've got to call the game as you see it. Well, How that is not a fumble in any level of football, I don't know. Well, we've gotten some fumble or not, but that hold was from the spot. So with the hold is, it should be 10 yards from behind. Oh, they missed the hold? Okay. Well. I'm just wondering <laughs> if, if he flung it with his other hand at the last second, you know, because the ball went 10 yards sideways. Right, so let's look at it again. He's facing backwards as his knee down. Down. His knee is down. Okay. Yeah, but the ball, where's the ball? Where's the ball, though? The ball we can't see. Out. Yeah. And was he flinging the ball with his hand, or did it just come loose? You can see the ball coming loose there, and his knee goes down. Well, close call, but illegal downfield was the call. Is that the tuck rule? Uh, I don't know what rule it is, but this is like watching a Red Sox game. We're over two and a half hours into a high school football game, which is unheard of. Here comes the referee now, okay. and let's see. Well, as upset as some of the fans are, I can tell you that the assistant coach is up above us. They're not too happy. So back to football. Third and 15. Third and long. Here's Mayen. Throws near side, completes it. Run out of bounds is Lemieux. One to pass to Lemieux is complete. Knocked out of bounds. By Will Chow. It will be fourth and 11. And if you look at the clock, it does. It said fourth down at 55, but thank goodness we have it under control. It's fourth and 11, and the game's on the line right here. Two oh eight to go in the ball game. Want to quit threatening here. Going for it on fourth and 11. Mayhem drops straight back. Get him. Here comes the rush, and down he goes. And the the Indians defense holds have been solid all season long. Danny Martin in there Danny to Martin make the stop on the Aponiquit quarterback. The, the Indians will have the possession with two Indians minutes to go in the game. First and ten for the Indians. Play of the night. Big play by the Indians defense. Came through again. Last few times the Pontiquet Lakers had the ball, the Indians defense have come up big. This time Pontiquet getting into enemy territory. I think the last time Dartmouth had the ball was yesterday. How <laughs> <laughs> about Danny down. Martin? A great play and a nice celebration afterwards. A lot of satisfaction felt there. Well, the Indians run. Marks on the carry. That's Marks, the workhorse. Immediate timeout call by Pontiquet. 155 to go. Timeout Pontiquet. We'll see how many timeouts Saponiquid has left. They have two more. So if the Indians don't get a first down, Saponiquid can call those two timeouts and get the ball back with decent amount of time on the clock. So the Indians need to get this first down here to put them away. It's been an entertaining game. Special teams have been key in this game. Big play by the Indians, Patrick Crane taking in the pass from Will Kelly for some 74 yards. Put the Indians in the lead, but the quarterbacking of John Mayen has been really good for opponent with nice high school player ball. Yeah, absolutely, and he's made some big plays in the game, none bigger than that one to Lemieux for 74 yards right in the closing moments of the half. Made some other big plays, too, throughout the game. So it's been a joy to watch him, but now it's time for the Indians to go to work. They need a first down. Second and long here for Dartmouth. 
And they run Escalin again on, on the inside. Gary. Escalin stays in bounds. He gets across the 20 to about the 23 yard line. Where it right down by is called by the Lakers once again. So now they have one left. Timeout, Lakers. Good play there by Estrella not to continue onward and get pushed out of bounds, stayed in bounds, forcing Aponik with to take that second to the last timeout. Only one timeout left now for Aponik. Third down and six, it feels like third a little bit six. longer than <laughs> you want it to be. You know, if it was third and two or third and one, but third and six, I mean, certainly very, very makeable for this Dartmouth Indians potent offense. But, yeah, you know, Aponik, they've made some plays defensively all night. So not a gimme, that's for sure. I'm giving it to Will Kelly, if I'm Coach White. Do the read option and have them pull it. And every time they go to the far yeah, side of the field, tomorrow, Will Kelly gets eight, at least six, six seven, eight yards of uh, whack. And Stadium, staying game, the Volt game, Dominic every game they run it so far. He's team. good at reading the edge. I'd keep it with my playmaker right here. Gates open at five. First band starts at six. And Dominic will be on the own 22-yard line. They have a third down and seven yards to go to put this game away. One timeout left for the Lakers. And they're going to give it to the workhorse, and he's, Marks is going to come up. Short. Yada too short. Marks on the carry. Merrily needed six, and he got five. Not enough. It'll be fourth down. So no timeout called by Aponiquit. The clock remains rolling. 1-16. You see it down the bottom of your screen. So he's still got that one timeout, and they're not using it here. I mean, perhaps thinking they're going to save it for, I don't know what. I mean, you know, when you got the ball, at least you can control what you're doing with it. You can spike it. You can, you know, throw down the sideline. That's a lot of time going off the clock. Indian coaches saying let the clock run down and take the penalty, and they do. So an interesting strategy there with the Pontiquet, perhaps thinking that, you know, if they get the ball and they're coming the down the field, maybe the they want to make a play up the middle. They want to run the ball up the middle, have the opportunity to pass up the middle and call that quick timeout. But that was a lot of time that went off the clock there. So Jason Martin will be kicking uh, deep inside his territory. Ricky White this looking on. Moves the ball back. You can only imagine what's He's swimming in his brain right about now. Line. Well, there's nobody back for a punt code either. No, we get the uh, punt seven. block on. No one back. They had an earlier miscue from the center. Snapping it over the punter's head. Good snap. Here's the rush. Oh, boy. And it's a short kick in the end. Let it roll. Fortunate. Don't touch it. Let the clock go. Why isn't the clock running? All right, I'm just going to double check with Doc Noons. Is one timeout left, Doc? That's what I got. Okay. Did, right. I was just surprised that they let that roll down like that. I don't know if the clock ran during that punt. No, it didn't. He ran it after the fact. Martin's punt is down at the 40. So a very short punt. Aponiquit has great field position. They have the football. Trailing 16-13. Of the Indians. It'll be first and 10 for the Lakers. Now the Indian defense has come up big a number of times in this game, but on the other hand, as Rick White looks on, he's got to be thinking about that quarterback, me, and he's dangerous. And has had the knack for coming up with some big plays tonight, too. So the Indians are going to have to step it up here defensively to stop this final thrust by Aponiquit. Here comes the rush. Meehan avoids it. Bumps into his own man, still scrambling. Now he's going to be hit and sacked, and the ball's out. He and Aponiquit he, recovers it. In there for the Indians was Devin Wilson. Sacked by Devin Wilson. They called an incomplete pass. Incomplete. They call it an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. Let's look on. Watch 53's hustle. <laughs> what kind of really see what happened there. <laughs> huh? This guy must throw it underhanded because that's a second call that uh, they said it was a forward pass. 
How about that hit by Devin Wilson? For the Lakers. Really let him have it. Here's the rush up the middle. They throw it across the middle. It's picked off. Picked off. It picked off. Ethan Marks. Ethan Marks comes away with the football, and the Indians will walk out of here with a hard-earned victory, Paul Santos. Oh, what a great way to finish off a Poniquit. Ethan Marks, who's worked hard all night long offensively and defensively. This time he just leaps up and picks that ball off. A kind of a desperation pass a little bit by quarterback Meehan because everyone in the – Ballpark Stadium here knew that he was going to throw the ball, and Marks was waiting for him. Andrew, you got this. Here comes the rush by Dartmouth. Good power rush. Throws into two or three Dartmouth Indians. Marks makes a nice play, goes up and gets it. And that's going to do it. Here from the stadium, 17 seconds will tick off. And Dartmouth High ups their record to 4 and 0. Oh, but Paul Santos, I think Ricky White's got a lot to talk to his team about tonight. A lot of miscues, both sides of the ball, but uncharacteristically for his team to walk out of here with a victory here tonight. Yeah, it was a nerve-wracking kind of night for the Dartmouth Indians, especially where they were the heavy favorites all night long. People thought this was going to be a, a two-touchdown win for the Dartmouth Indians. Well, the Indians had all they could handle. Aponiquet almost pulled off the upset. But in the end, the Indians did pull it together, and they held the Lakers there in their last gas. The offense came through in the second half, and the Indians come away with a 16-13 victory. But it was not easy. Well, not easy. Not at all. The Indians up their record to 4-0. Oh. Aponiquet drops to 0-3. Oh Andrew, your final thoughts? It's great that Dartmouth is now, you know, 4-0. Oh. They're a good team, but I think a game like this is, is useful for a team like Dartmouth. You know, they think they're going to come in and roll teams at times, and they're expected to be Aponiquet, but it's good to get a scare and a good close victory for them. And, you know, it's I'm sure they're going to have, have a long week of film and long week of practice after some of these miscues, but... In the day they pulled off victory, and you know, what you're going to do, they win. And who do they have next week? You know, off the top of your head. Is it Brockton next week? Saturday. Brockton Saturday. And on Saturday. Up there or here? Up there. Up there. Oh, boy, give us something to do. Paul, your final thoughts. Well, a real quick summary here. A 26-yard uh, field goal by Oliver Taradage gave Dartmouth a 3-0 lead in the closing seconds of the... <laughs> Someone's exiting the booth over here, catching me from behind here. Oh, that was Doc Noons. Okay, all right. He's good at that. A 76-yard touchdown pass to Lemieux made it 7-3 to in favor of a part of where going into the halftime locker room. And some big plays in the third quarter, a 25-yard touchdown pass. Excuse me, touchdown run by Will Kelly made it 10-7 the Indians. Then back it went the other way. A two-yard touchdown run by Vincent Oliveri made it 13-10 upon a quit. Then a 74-yard touchdown to Patrick Crane, beautiful pass, wide open, gave the Indians a 16-13 lead. And then in the closing moments, the interception by Ethan Marks nails it down, and the Indians come away with the three-point hard-fought victory. Well, they're up at Brockton uh, next week. That's, that's the league schedule for uh, Dartmouth High School. So uh, if you, you folks in the town uh, want to do something next Saturday afternoon, take the 40-minute ride up Route 24. And uh, I believe Brockton is winless. They played uh, some real good teams. They play high division one football at Brockton. They always have. They're off to a slow start. The Indians undefeated at 4-0. So we'll look forward to uh, see what happens uh, as they start league play next week. There's your final score. Dartmouth High School 16, the Pontiquot Lakers 13. For my broadcast partners, Paul Santos and Andrew Thompson, I'm Jim Thompson. Until next time, so long, everybody.